Well, we're back here at the uh, the science cave, and we're going to talk a little bit about temperature controls. And when you talk about temperature controls, we're talking about those things which affect uh, global temperatures. And if I can get my pen going here, there we go. So we're going to talk temperature controls. Well, temperature controls, many of these are fairly self-evident and uh, things that you can probably, uh, you've probably seen, experienced, or even your intuition would, would tell you. And the first one is altitude. Well, altitude, as you can probably assume, is going higher up in the altitude up in the sky you know let's say if we have a mountain and we definitely can uh, you think about it you know we've seen uh, when you're at lower lower altitude it's warmer and then at higher altitudes it is colder we've seen many uh, pictures of mountains uh, during the summer that would have uh, some snow up on the uh, on the top of them even during the summer and this is because of that whole idea that they are at higher altitude and so you would have uh, the snow up there and at warmer you don't see it uh, you know Michigan we don't run into a whole lot of mountains but if you get out west and so forth uh, it's, it's fairly obvious uh, we know in the troposphere also that as you increase altitude the temperatures go down the other one here that we'll discuss is let's see if I can get the next frame here we're going to talk about latitude Get that out of there. And let's talk about latitude. And again, this is you know fairly obvious when we're at zero degrees latitude or the equator. We're at the equator. You know, you think about it being warm. And we're at the poles. You think about temperatures being cold. And again, you know, we experience this. Uh, you know, a lot of people go down south for the uh, over spring break or Christmas break going down Florida. Because you go where it's warm weather. You don't head up to uh, upper Canada during spring break to, uh, to enjoy the weather. And so latitude definitely uh, has an effect on that. Uh, another one that's a kind of interesting is cloud cover if you ever notice at night when there are no clouds it gets pretty cold out uh, so at night the clouds if there's clouds around they actually as act as a blanket now we're going to talk a little bit later about the earth re-radiating re -radiating its energy and at night it re-radiates it and if there's that blanket of clouds it really traps in the heat now during the day during the day what ends up happening is that the uh, the clouds will reflect sunlight and actually keep it cooler during the day when clouds are out. Many times during the summer, if you happen to have a cloud go by, it blocks out the sun, you can actually feel the drop in temperature. So, so during the day, the clouds block sun. And when you start thinking about this, when the clouds block the sun, it does get cooler out. At night, as the Earth re-radiates its energy, this blanket actually keeps the atmosphere warmer. And we'll see this a lot 
uh, during the winter. We'll talk about it. Terry DeBoer will talk about it. Bill Steffens about the insulating properties of clouds at night. So during the, at night, if there's clouds, it acts as a blanket, keeps the, keeps the air warmer. During the day, clouds block the sun and it uh, keeps the, uh, the earth's surface cooler. So when clouds block the sun during the daytime, we get it. It definitely is cooler out. Now there's an interesting term that's used for uh, that's used for this, and that is the whole idea of albedo. And I'm going to put this down here albedo albedo is really how much of the sun's radiation is reflected by a surface so it's the uh, the surface surface reflects reflects radiation. Uh, snow reflects a lot. If you've ever been skiing during the winter when the, uh, when, the, when the sun is out, you know, you can still get sunburned because of the albedo. The snow reflects a lot. Same thing with water. If you better, you know, water skiing and so forth, water does reflect a lot of the radiation from the sun. And that percentage, that amount that it reflected it is called albedo. There's another interesting, uh, temperature control and we touched on it a little bit today but we're going to look at windward and leeward windward and leeward in the in the continental US the prevailing wind blows from blows from the west to the east so we think about, you know, and we'll find out a little bit later why that does hold true. But it does blow from the west to the east. We know we got our diagram here, and the prevailing wind blows from west to east. Well, let's look at this map, the United States. So the west coast would be considered the windward side of the continental U.S. The east coast would be the leeward side. Uh, you can think in terms of this of uh, Lake Michigan, the west side of Lake Michigan, uh, Milwaukee would be the windward side, and when you get on the uh, other side of Lake Michigan, you are on the leeward side. So you can think of it in terms of that of there also. Well, it's kind of interesting in the uh, in the continental United States, and they've got two cities here. One is Eureka, California, and the other one is is New York City. The interesting thing about Eureka, California, it is on the windward side and you have this wind blowing across the Pacific Ocean. And what it does, this water from the Pacific Ocean, the water moderates moderates the temperature. This water moderates the temperature. So what happens over on the uh, Pacific coast, we got cold, really it's somewhat cold water. There's a, a, a current here that's a cold current. And what you have, and this one would be uh, Eureka here, you have fairly consistent temperatures throughout the year. You know, during the summer doesn't get too hot and not too cold during the winter. New York, on the other hand, is on the windward side. New York is on the windward side. And what happens is, as this air moves across the continental United States, it can warm up or it can cool down very quickly. And in New York, you get some pretty good extremes of temperature. So the blue here is would be New York City. So this one is New York City and the red one is Eureka here. The thing to remember here is 
when you're talking about and again they're about the same latitude they're both at sea level the wind coming off the ocean is is fairly cold and it keeps this about the same temperature all year round and you can see there's not much of a of a change here New York on the other hand during the winter can get pretty darn cold and it gets pretty hot during the summer that's because the air as it flows across the continental US has a chance to uh, pick up the characteristics during the winter the air is going to get cold and during the winter the air definitely excuse me during the winter it's going to get cold and then during the summer it's going to warm up on there and so uh, windward and leadward is another one another character or temperature control is really land and water and I'm just gonna put down land land heats up quickly heats up quickly cools quickly and again you know we're looking at some relative terms here if you ever been out to the beach during the summer you notice that the uh, during the day the sun as it heats the sand the sand gets pretty hot but at night it cools off pretty quickly water on the other hand water heats up slowly and cools slowly water heats slowly and cools slowly water kind of acts as a heat sink what water has is a fairly high specific heat and when you get into chemistry you'll talk a little bit more about specific heat well what this means and uh, we're we'll, we're going to take some look at some uh, temperatures uh, during the class this year between Grand Haven and let's even say Grand Rapids Grand Haven is on the on the shore of Lake Michigan and you'll find that during the winter the temperatures in Grand Haven will be a couple three degrees warmer than inland than let's say Grand Rapids why because the water takes a long time to cool down so it moderates the temperature of that Grand Haven or any uh, lakeshore community so water definitely well, water moderates and we'll put this down here moderates the temperature moderates temperature or land on the other hand it heats up fast and cools down fast you know I'll think of uh, those places out in uh, oh the Dakotas get really cold during the winter but they get really hot during the summer because there's nothing there to moderate the temperature uh, make sure in class you ask me to define the term continentality and uh, We'll, uh, we'll talk about that. If not this week, we'll catch it here uh, before too much longer about the whole idea of large land masses heat up quickly and cool down quickly. Well, that's it for this one. You know, and as usual, if you got some questions in class, uh, don't be afraid to ask.